Alright, hey, hey, it's Mika here, and I'm shooting a video for the Sauron Lightbee again, an yet another Sauron Lightbee video, and it's going to be on a brake upgrade, alright, so hey, Mega finally going to upgrade, I, I know, I've been constantly been upgrading the brakes on the Sauron, and, and then this probably might be the final one, I'm not sure, okay, I've upgraded the rotors, the brake pads, and, and then now we're going to go upgrade the whole brakes, the whole front brakes, okay? So what, why is this the reason Hazy Mega is doing this? Because my pistons are stuck, okay? <laughs> um, I noticed in the last race, race my bike was braking kind of funny, alright? The, the, the lever was like unusually hard and I found out like two of the pistons on one side were, weren't um, moving at all and the other two were moving, alright? And then one of the one of the pit, one of the uh, brake pads were like almost all gone. All right, so, so that that's the problem. One side was pushing harder than the rest of them. The other ones were stuck. Okay, and I tried to clean them and stuff, and they just they wouldn't move so much. I said just forget it. I think I'm just gonna get some new brakes. <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, the the front brakes I've pushed it. I pushed them really hard at the track, and that's probably why they're like that. Okay, is what I'm gonna say. I don't really use the rear brakes all that much, so the rear brakes are still okay. So that's why I'm not gonna upgrade the rear brakes. They're just there to kind of just like hold the bike in place sometimes. <laughs> that's what I wanna say, cause, I, cause generally I use the regen and the front brake, uh, the regen and the front brake to brake, all right? If I really, if I really, really need to slow down, that's what I'll do, okay? Um, I very rarely use the mechanical rear brake anymore, okay? Which I should, I should because it will keep the battery from overheating because of the regen, but anyway so i got this magura mt5 all right so this is like this is like the brake upgrade that everybody uses apparently okay uh, lunacycle used to sell them and all these other places sell uh, the, i heard a lot of people use these online um there's a couple different versions of this all right this is the regular magura mt5 this isn't the mt5e or the mt5 e stop or or next i, I know there's a couple versions of this out floating out there this is the most basic one i think the mt5 all right um and the, what i've what i found come to find out is that they're kind of hard to find right now all right um yeah these are this is not easy to come by right now because i have to really really shop for these all right i got these from worldwide cyclery for 125 dollars okay i think luna cycle was selling them for 99 bucks actually that's actually the best price i've seen for them uh, and then there is a, the MT5e version that is designed for e-bikes. I think really the only difference with that one and this one is that it has like a, a switch for the brake, okay? I don't really think there's any difference between this and the MT5e. Maybe the pads might be different. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm hoping this will get us to stop faster because in the last race, I, I was overshooting corners. I was going too hot in the corners. I couldn't get the bike slowed down in time. Hopefully this will help, okay? Um, the, net, the only other upgrade we could do after this is... Okay, okay, there's like two more things we could do to make the braking better on, on the Sauron, all right? And I really don't really need good brakes unless I'm at the racetrack. That's the only reason I need better brakes is to stop the bike faster at the racetrack, all right? And the Sauron brakes were doing okay, is what I'm going to say, all right? But I think they're just, they've just gotten old and I, I haven't, Hades Omega hasn't maintained them all that well. So I decided, hey, let's just buy it. Uh, we'll just get a new brake system, all right? And this is what I came up with. If you buy, if you buy like the stock Sauron brake, you know, the whole master cylinder and everything, it probably costs just as much. So I said, hey, let's just upgrade it, you know? Um, I think that's what a lot of people do. That's what I'm gonna say. So, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna, Hades Mega's gonna try this MT5 out. Um, I also did buy the, um, what is it? The brake bleeding kit, all right? It's a small brake bleeding kit is what it said. It was like 30 bucks, it's kind of expensive. One thing I hate about mountain bike brakes is they're expensive and there's really, you don't get a lot with it, you know? <laughs> okay, the only good thing going for it is it's lightweight is what I was gonna say. 
all right so so the mt5e you can use it on on the left or right handlebar you can use it on the front or back uh, the the reason you can use it anywhere you want is because they give you an extra long hose so uh, we're going to use it in the front we're going to have to shorten the hose so that's the important thing okay um so bye bye old uh old uh, Suron brakes all right I can probably still use what little pad I have left on the rear pads okay if I wanted to um, hopefully these pads don't wear out as fast as the Suron ones that's one thing the the Suron brakes they wear out they kind of wear out fast even if you don't use them a whole lot and they wear unevenly okay and that's that's probably Hades Omega's fault I should be cleaning the pistons all right there's a way you can clean the pistons by by pushing them outward and holding in them that, that way and then flossing it with the string. And I believe me, I tried that and it it, it's, it kind of helped. It, it did get the pistons moving again, but like I, I couldn't get it to work the same way. And, and I had to buy like a brake bleeder kit to, to put more fluid in it because some, some of the fluid went past the piston. And yeah, I could just rebuild it, but I said, hey, let's just upgrade it. Let's try this out, all right? So the, um, the only upgrade, the next level upgrade from this would be to get a bigger rotor okay get a bigger rotor with an adapter bracket all right that would allow us to use a bigger rotor uh, if you have bigger rotors you get more leverage all right more not necessarily clamping force but you get more leverage the bigger the bigger your leverage is the more you can stop all right that's why bigger rotors stop better than smaller rotors all right you get a bigger the the circumference of the uh, of the rotor is bigger and that gives you more torque on the wheel all right um, so, so just upgrade, upgrading the rotors helps a lot, all right? But we're gonna give these a try, okay? <laughs> uh, one thing Hades Mega doesn't like four piston rotors, uh, four piston calipers, because there's more pistons to go wrong, all right? I, I just wouldn't mind just having a dual piston, okay? But, but that's what the Soron uses, four piston calipers, okay? Um, so what can we do after that if it, it still doesn't brake better, okay? Uh, Hades Mega doesn't kind of want to do that because then I have to switch brakes, brake adapters all the time. I don't want to do that. I, I, I switch between the dirt and the street setup on this bike, so I, I want it to be an easy, easy switch, okay? It's already hard enough. I got to change the chain every time, man. It's kind of freaking annoying. Um, so to, to prevent that, um, yeah, I would like to just stay with the same rotor size. We're going to use the same rotors, okay? And the rotors are good, okay? Um, but also having a, a bigger, wider rotor would also help dissipate heat a little bit better too, so. But I've never had problems with fading the brakes. It's just, I just didn't have enough braking force last time, okay? Um, and, uh, and yeah, okay, so yeah, the, the final, final brake upgrade that I could do is to go with a dual disc setup, all right? And that would be very expensive because this fork doesn't accommodate dual discs. All right, there's no there's nowhere to mount the caliper on it on the other side. All right, and and I would need a hub that accepts a dual disc um, um, rotor. All right, because they there are some out there, but it, yeah, it's very it'll be very a very expensive modification is what I'm saying. Hey, he's mega, you know, he's mega. He's cheap. <laughs> so, I'm I'm uh, I'm frugal, very frugal. Okay. Um, that's why I'm still using the RST fork is what I'm gonna say, right? I, I, I would I would love to buy like a two thousand one thousand two thousand dollar uh better fork, you know, but like I think the better the money would be better spent towards a bigger wheel. Okay. Anyway, um I'm gonna go ahead and uh let's go uh let's go take a look at what's in the box and then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and install them and I'll show you what uh what it looks like when it's on there. Alright, alright, here's the out. All right, he's being here, and we're gonna go do a quick unboxing. Okay, this is a, this is the Magura MT5 braking system. All right, I purchased this from Worldwide Cyclery for $125. That is the best price I could find. Okay, um, and they're very, very hard to find at the time of, of, I'm making this video. Okay, um, performance components, Magura. Okay, this is Magura MT5. Uh, num there's a number here on the bottom, 2700477, all right? That's the one that I bought, all right? If I could have bought it from something like, like Lunacycle, I probably would because they were cheaper from Lunacycle. But Worldwide Cyclery seemed like a pretty cool place, all right? Um, all right. So they've been making braking products since 1893, made by Magura, okay? Magura.com. I guess you can find them on Facebook and Instagram right there. All right, and here we go. There's the Magura logo again, 
and then it says here, I'll read it to you. Well, there's a number here that says BR6335. All right, it's a barcode. And there's another number under the barcode, 4126144667, all right? And then uh, right here it says Magura MT5 disc brake and lever, front or rear hydraulic post mount black, okay? And uh, that's it. The back is just white. Let's go open it up. All right, here's what's in the box. All right, I haven't even seen what's in the box. You get, you get all these Magura stickers. Look at all that. You have big ones, little ones. All right, maybe I'll put one on my fender. All right. Here, you got a five-year leak-proof guarantee, all right? I'll, I'll let, let you pause that if you want to take a look, if you want to read that. That sounds good to me. Five-year leak-proof guarantee. Okay, this is the owner's manual right here. All right, you can take a quick look-see. There's really not much to it, all right? I guess they just it's a bunch of URLs and QR codes, all right? Okay, there is the brakes themselves, right? Okay, it's got in a little fancy little net bag the brake lever. Oh, this is it's got a plastic lever. I don't like. Oh no, it's not plastic. It's aluminum. It feels like it's plastic though. It's it's all textured and everything. <laughs> okay, let me take that off. There you go. All right, here it says Magura. Hard to see the the packaging is white and the the brakes are black. All right, it's Magura here. It says E here. All right, MT right there. You got a little a little lever to push on the the master cylinder. Okay, this will go around the this is the handlebar clamp. And then there's your brake line. Okay. It's like I think it's two about two thousand millimeter long brake line. Alright, they give you a, a bag with some uh, screws in it. Alright. Maybe we'll use them. Alright, it looks like there's a kind of little bleeder nipple right here. Alright, and then this is a this is like the the collet, I think. That's what they call it. There's a little collet in okay. the bag. That's what's in the bag. Two screws, um, a bleeding nipple, and a collet, and some little plastic, a little plastic screw thing. Okay, and I think that's it. That's all it comes with. Yep. Yep. That, nope. That's it. Such a big box for for not a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> so let's say okay. So there you go. You got the brakes, that little pack with the fasteners. A manual and a bunch of stickers and this little kind of mesh thing that was on it okay so I'm gonna go ahead and install these and I'll let you know how how it goes all right so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to shorten the brakes but first we'll have to uninstall the old swarm brakes all right here's my go okay one thing I can tell you is I like the Magura brakes much better than the Suron one all right or the brake levers okay because the perch the perch has to I have to take off all this stuff here to get to the perch, okay? Um, if you look at the new one, okay, right. if you look at the Magura Master Cylinder, it's got, it's it's kind of like a motorcycle brake one, okay? Um, it looks like you gotta put this side upward, okay? So if you do flip the brake, you're gonna have to make sure that this always stays up, okay? I guess, okay? This is a brake pants. I guess it does have brake pants. Nice, okay. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna have to take the grips out and everything, which is a bummer. Because <laughs> the other one, you don't need to do that, all right? I guess I could cut them out, but that's fine. I, I probably should install a new grip donut anyways. My grip donut's all tore up. Okay, just a little note there. Ah, all right, so here's what I've got done so far. Half hour into it. <laughs> um, so I realized, oh, wait a minute, this is the rear brake. This isn't the front brake. <laughs> So, but anyway, I changed that grip donut. Um, I'm really bad on the left side, man, when I'm rubbing. Um, so I've taken all the grips off. Uh, I had to take the handlebar off because I needed enough room to take this off. Okay. All this just so we can take this out, right, guys? Um, and then, uh, so what we're going to do, okay, we've got two wires coming off of it. And I guess we're going to do, we're going, we're doing away without, with these, uh, with these switches, all right, these brake sensor switches, um, I I never used them anyways, all right. They broke, they broke quickly. So <laughs> um, now if I did get the MT5E, 
I I might see if I can get the MT5E um, at least the micro switch for the lever. Okay, so maybe we can you get the brake lights working on my bike again. But like for the longest time, my brake lights have not been working on this bike. Okay, um, the previous owner had installed a brake light um, uh, relay, and uh, and don't work no more. <laughs> Unfortunately, and I think it's because those switches don't work. But anyway, um, so so far I've I've uh, unbolted the uh, the caliper, and I'm, we're gonna go take this off next. Okay. Um, yeah, it was such a pain in the ass. Uh, the other ones are so much easier to install because it, it, it the clamp comes out. Okay. Um, what a pain in the ass. That's what I'm gonna say. All right. So yeah, keep at it. Okay, also the good thing about taking the throttle off, the throttle is easier to take off than the grip, all right? Because the grip, you have to push onto the handlebar. The grip is actually on the throttle, so that's what makes that easy. All right, here's my hair. <laughs> okay. There it is. I got it out. So there's, there's a comparison between the two brakes, all right? Um, yeah, I think it would go like that, right? So that's how we're going to have it installed. So see, this design is nicer to install because I don't have to take the whole handlebar apart for it. <laughs> It looks like it's a little thicker, so it's going to take a little more space on the handlebar, though. Mm. Okay, so that's the difference between the master cylinders, all right, or the levers. Boy, these ones, how do you adjust these? I think you just adjust this nut here. That would be kind of hard to adjust, too, because it's in the, uh, oh, it's a Torx, too. How annoying, right? Yeah, it's a Torx screw. Same with these. See, these are torque screws. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to adjust that bit. Um, yeah, so these are the difference in calipers. Okay. Kind of the wrong way. They're going to like that. The, uh, the Magura ones look much more beefier. Sure do. They look like the calipers on, like, on, a, on a car or, or a, a real motorcycle. Okay. And this one's already loaded with the pads. So. Okay, so uh, let's go see. Oh, yeah, the first thing we're going to do... Uh, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the lever first. And then I'm going to go shorten the the brake line. Okay. I don't know how much we have to shorten. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there's a, quite a bit to shorten. <laughs> there's like... A, uh, what is it? Half as much... Uh, or twice as much. It's it's twice as long. It's almost twice as long as the stock brake. Okay, so and that's if you wanted to use it as a rear brake, you could do that. Okay, but this is only going to be on the front. Okay. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is we're going to cut it the same length as this. All right, and I'm going to add like two extra inches to it, so we get a little more room for like the handlebars and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Okay. Cool deal. All right, so um, from what I heard, uh, when you cut it, and when you cut it, um, you got to have this facing outward. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to install this on the handlebar, all right, and then it's said to um, face it upward first, all right, and then and then cut it, and then put the hose back in, okay, and then that way you don't need to bleed it, all right, because uh, it keeps the it keeps the um, the fluid from coming out, all right? Um, and plus, I have the bleed kit, so if, if, if we do have to bleed it, then, then we don't have to bleed it, okay? <laughs> all right, here's me here. All right, here's me here. So I've gone and measured everything out that I need to do. So in the manual, it says uh, what you gotta do is you gotta put this on the handlebar and you gotta face it upward, okay? Um, before you cut it, all right? That way it keeps, uh, it keeps the fluid from falling out, okay? And then, um, so, so it says to cut it 150 millimeters away from the from the master cylinder, okay? So that's about one, that's 150. I measured it with that ruler right there, okay? So so um, I measured it, I marked it, and then I line that mark up with where the other, where the Sauron master cylinder is, okay? Roughly where it is, all right? And then I put them side by side, all right? And uh, yeah, and then I lined them up and then I added two and a half inches just in case you know it's nice to have it a little bit longer so it's not not so tight all the time you know 
and plus my handlebars are taller in stock so be nice to have it a little bit longer i didn't really have much problem with this before so i i, I don't need it, need it to be like super long so okay so i think that's okay it'll be easier to work with it too okay so i marked it there so we're going to cut it uh, we're going to mount that on the handlebar yeah actually i can start putting the bike back together already so i'm going to put the handlebars back on and then we're going to we're gonna mount this on the handlebar. We're gonna mount it facing up or okay. 12 o'clock. So, so we won't have to take this. We won't have to. I don't. I don't even know if you can do that with that because that has a banjo bolt pressed into it. Um, so I've lined up the calipers and I moved it there, and I added, I added two and a half inches from where it meets here. Okay, and then, um, and then yeah, and then, then that's it. And then so we're gonna cut it. We're gonna cut it there, and then we're gonna cut it right here. Okay. In fact, I will put two, put two marks so I don't mix it up with the other one. Okay, so the farther one is the one that we want to cut. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, here we are. Um, so I've got the brake line routed through, kind of, kind of where I want it. Um, and then uh, you can see all this, all this is going to be going bye bye. Okay. Um, so what we got to do first is it says cut, cut it 150 millimeters away from the hose. All right. Um, and you want to angle the um, the brake lever upwards. Okay. Just like how it is right now. Also, there is a screw on this. Uh, there's a there's an arrow on it. I'll show it to you later. It's it's an arrow pointing up. So I guess when you put the clamp back on, you want that to be facing up. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's pretty much ready to go. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna get these linesman pliers. All right. It just says use wire cutter. So that's what I'm gonna use. We're gonna um, we're gonna cut it here first. All right. And then move the hose up. And then uh, and then we're gonna cut it here. And then we're going to route the hose up into there, okay? Pretty much where it's going right now. I mean, everything is all routed already, so. So, but we're going to have to, we're going to be using this last piece of hose right here, okay? And I think, I don't think we're going to have to, there's a banjo bolt on, on this side, all right? And there's a bolt on the other side. So I guess, I think you can flip-flop this. You can install this over here if you wanted. But I looked at the Soron one, and the Soron one comes out of this side also. We may have to re-clock the banjo bolt, but... Um, we'll worry about that after, okay? It's kind of in the right orientation already, so I don't want to mess around with it. Okay, so we're going to cut this. We're going to cut this, and then uh, we're going we're gonna to take the, uh, the nut out here, okay? And then remove the hose from it. And then, uh, or we'll cut this first, and then we'll cut this, okay? And then we'll route this up there, and then we'll, we'll take this hose off. And then we'll put it in there. Okay, supposedly, supposedly, if you do it this way, or I don't know if Hazemag is going to do it or right or not, but if you do it this way, you don't have to bleed the brakes. Okay, it, everything should like stay in there or something. <laughs> okay, gravity, all right, type of thing or suction. All right, so I'll just get a video of me doing it, and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, let's figure out. Okay, so I've cut the line in two places, all right? That's the part that came out. And a bunch of fluid came out when I did the second cut. Um, I think we should be okay for this side. Um, I think as long as you have it like facing upward like that, it's not gonna leak too much, okay? And then, um, and then the, so the next thing that, so one thing to do is when you cut it, one thing you wanna make sure you cut it straight, all right? It looks pretty straight. Um, and then another thing is you wanna make sure the, the hose doesn't collapse, okay? Um, that's why they have special hose cutters, but it's okay, all right, because if it if it's not round anymore, okay, I know it's, it's kind of hard to see because, okay, anyway, if the hose doesn't look like it's round, if it's kind of oval, just kind of crimp it so it looks oval, 
I mean, uh, round, okay? Like that, okay? And then so now what we're gonna do is loosen this, pull this out, and then plug that one in, okay? Pretty simple. Okay, so I took the hose out and this is what's inside it. Okay, there's this uh, kind of nut here. All right, and then there's a what's called a collet, I think. And then there, and so I guess we gotta take this collet out and we gotta put it on the new hose, I think. Okay, there's something like that in the package, but I think we gotta use this, man. I'm not really sure how to get that out. So, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, right. so after doing some Google Foo, all right, Google Foo, I uh, I discovered that uh, you cannot do this, okay? You have to take this. This is actually pressed onto here, and you can't take that out anymore. So that that is not coming out, okay? Um, that has to be, like, pressed on there or something. So that's why they give you this, okay? Um, they give you this little pin here, all right? And you're supposed to stick that in the hose, and then you stick this. This is, this is basically this part right here, okay? <laughs> I think that's how it works. So, so I've got to... Put this in the new hose, all right, this little guy, and then we got to put, slide this over it and the little, the little rubber thing, and then, uh, and then, and then tighten it, tighten it with this, okay, because that's going to push on that and then it's going to push on this, I think, okay. okay. Ace Mega is kind of like, what the hell, the manual, the instructions were not very good for this thing, man. <laughs> um, okay, so, so yeah, it is, it is how I mentioned it. Okay, you gotta put the little collet on. Oh, hold on, hold on. There's um, there's this rubber dealy. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll put the rubber thing on last. Okay, so I already got, I already have the rubber dealy on the, on the line already. So we'll leave that there. All right, and then so what we're gonna have to do is slide the collet on there. Okay. Okay, and then you push this barb fitting in here. best as you can oh, okay just like that okay so I pushed the bar fitting in there and now I got this collet here oh no hold on I kind of messed up um, I need the okay I need this okay this has got to go on here all right and then the collet goes on there okay and then that's gonna push up on there like that and then it says to quickly quickly install it onto the the brake line so you don't lose fluid all right okay i'm going to quickly install it on the brake line let me make sure my eight millimeter is handy so just so um it tells you just to leave the, all the fit all the lines pointing upward so you don't lose uh brake fluid okay okay i got my eight millimeter handy here and here we go tighten it it's just to tighten it to like four newton meters or something if I remember correctly this was flush okay so I think just when it's flush it's good I see a little brake fluid coming out of it I think we might be fine Okay, I think that's good. Some brake fluid came out of it when I tighten it. Hopefully that's okay. All right. There's a little bit of brake fluid dribbling out of it. Hopefully that's the extent of that. Okay, so that what that is is like a quick, kind of like a quick install dealy, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go install our, uh, this little rubber cover. Okay, I got this rubber cover here.
Okay, I think that's good. Um, so if I wanted to, I could crack this open and move this up a little bit. I think it's okay the way it is. I don't think I'm going to mess with it. Um, I think that's per I'm pretty sure that's how the Sauron one was too also. The Sauron kind of wraps around there. Now, that's kind of not good because like a branch or something could snag that and rip that out. Okay, so that that could be a potential problem. Um, to help kind of, I don't know, I don't think it would really help all that much. But I'm just going to leave it like that. It looks okay. I think uh, I think it will be okay because it... It's kind of goes it kind of goes inward so that's a good thing okay and I have the little clamp here it's not super duper tight but it'll work um, okay and then there I got the brake line routed similar to my old one okay it's kind of it's kind of twisted a little bit but I think it should be fine okay and it kind of works I think it needs to be bled. <laughs> Hades Vega will ride it around for a while and then see how he likes it okay but that's how it is. It's very similar. Let me see. Yeah, it's two finger. It's a two finger brake. It's very similar to the stock Sauron one. Okay. Yeah. It's not all creaky like the. Actually, the Sauron one is like a three finger brake. This one is a two finger brake. That's fine. I'm happy with the two finger brake. Okay, and that's about as far as I can put it out with the um, with the Sauron throttle. Because so you got to remember, the the electronic Sauron throttle has this flat spot here for the. Uh, for these brakes because they this um it kind of gets in the way all right so you want that flat spot to be where the master cylinder is so you can scooch it over but yeah you can see there's there's a lot of space right between there so okay and then i have to figure out what to do with this i think i'm just going to take it out okay this little switch dealy i'll find out where it goes and we'll just get rid of it i won't use it anymore i don't even think it works anymore so <laughs> okay so yeah, there it is. Um, I feel, I don't know. Uh, you can adjust it a little bit too. I think that's okay right there. Maybe I want to adjust it out a little bit. So uh, what I would have to do is get a Torx bit and then tighten this. And it, so the screw would go out a little bit. So I might go do that. But I think to do that, well, we could just use an Allen wrench or some kind of Torx. I think you can use Allen wrenches on this too. That's, that's the kind of bolt where you can use an Allen wrench or a or Torx bit. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, I think you can adjust it with this screw right here. If anything, it's easier, it's kind of easier to get to than the Sauron one. The Sauron one is this teeny tiny little Allen wrench here, okay? Here, it's just right here, okay? And I got it behind the hand guards right here. I don't think they'll get damaged, hopefully, okay? I have heard that if you get in a crash with these, they, they kind of break, so. But I have hand guards, so I think we should be fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go put the bike back together, and then uh, we'll see what's up. All right, but I think it, I think it works. Yeah, it works. Cool. It sounds like the sounds like it's warped. <laughs> it sounds like the brake is warped. Um, I will see if I can align it a little bit better, but I think that should be fine. It yeah, it really works right out of the box. Think. Cool. Can't wait to try them out. All right. So uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put the bike back together, and then and then and then I'll show you the final results, and then that'll be it. All right. Here's me go. Okay, ta-da! It's done. <laughs> so it's mostly done. I just have to put the handlebar bag back, and it's done. All right. So let's go take a quick look at it. I was able to align the the brake a little bit better. I basically I just kind of looked at it, and then I just kept on pumping the brake until I saw the brake, because because you know when it's off, when it's off, and I guess with the uh, with the floating rotors it's not as bad, but but if it's off you'll see the rotor um, flex a little bit. So I just moved it in a direction where like it wouldn't flex anymore and then I tightened it, okay? I tightened it to 11 uh, foot-pounds or 15 newton meters for the caliper and then I tightened the handlebar to about like five newton meters, okay? I think that should be good. Um, the brake, the brake lever is a lot different than the, uh, the stock lever, okay? Hopefully that'll do the trick. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to move it up or down. I think I might have to move it down a little bit, actually. It's definitely, it's a two-finger lever, guys, all right? So if you use, like, three fingers to brake, I don't think you're going to like these, okay? Um, but I am a two I am a two and one-finger breaker, so, yeah, I think this would be perfect for me, okay? Um, and I, I think I will, I think that's fine right there. It feels good, okay? It doesn't feel as hard, as stiff as this, 
All right, but we'll see. This feels like it's too tight, you know. I'm gonna have to loosen that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move this down just a tad so it's right behind the bar, okay? And then, uh, and then yeah, and the bike. Hopefully, the bike runs. <laughs> yep. Let me just double check. Okay, there we go. Yep, good to go. We've got the 21 inch front and the 219 chain kit, uh, and then uh, and then the brakes. So we're gonna go to go to the dirt bike park and we're gonna go test all that stuff out. See how it is because I'm getting ready to go dirt bike racing with this soon. All right. But yeah, okay. Also, there's um. So since I still have one of those brake sensors, I didn't bother taking the whole thing out. All right. Uh, what I did was I cut it. All right. That's what's left of it right there. All right. And then I just put a tape around it because maybe in the future I might be able to get a micro switch for this guy because I think I think you can. There's one with the micro switch. The 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 MT5E has the micro switch for e-bikes. All right, and I I don't really need it honestly. Um, and uh, so I'm just gonna keep this tucked. I'm just gonna zip tie this right here and keep that tucked away. So it did neaten up everything a little bit. All right, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks good. Yeah. So check. We'll do like a handlebar check. Looks good. I don't think anybody anything is too tight. If anything, the the throttle is too tight because the handlebar actually moved up when I installed these new forks on it. So just I think the throttle is tight. Okay. Everything else looks okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. Look forward to a, a review video. Uh, on the brakes, okay. I I'll, after after I take it off riding in the dirt, I will do a review of it. But yeah, we still have to kind of like break that break in the pads. Um, and but stuff. yeah, that's how it's gonna be right there. Okay, we'll see how it does. But uh, yeah, the install was pretty easy. I do have the brake bleeding kit. Um, we can take a look. Yeah, let's go take a look at that real quick, and then that'll be the end of okay, the video. Here's okay, here's the brake uh, brake bleeding kit. I got it from Worldwide Cyclery. Just. The same place I got the brakes from, okay. So there it is. That's what it comes with, a lot of stuff. <laughs> it comes with the Magura Royal Blood, okay. That's the that's the brake fluid it comes with. There's a couple syringe, there's like two syringes. There's one here, there's one here. This is another manual. Okay, they've, they've gone, everyone has gone all digital now. They don't have paper manuals anymore. Um, oh, it's got these little tools here. And it's got another one of those little little barb fittings more brake fittings yeah lots of stuff it comes with pretty much all the stuff that came with the brake kit okay i think what i'm gonna do is just keep this in the box all right so we'll just keep all the brake stuff in that box i've got the extra lines right here and they've leaked the fluid out already all right it's that like light blue royal blood fluid all right um i do have these leftover little dealies so what you can use these for is you you put them in the uh in the calipers all right you slip them in and then you tighten the brakes and then you can clean the calipers with this okay um, it gives it something to bite down on so the pistons come out, out all the way and then you can floss it with a string okay um, that's what I was trying to do with that brake okay but I couldn't I couldn't restore it so um, I said just let's just buy some new brakes I, I could use a brake upgrade anyway so so definitely I hope this is an upgrade over the Suron one all right so um, but we'll we'll have to I'll have to ride it and find out and I'll let you guys know. Um, I will be testing it. We, I got some a number of uh, dirt bike races. I got two dirt bike, three dirt bike races. I got three dirt bike races and two supermoto races left to go. Okay, and then another hair scramble. So I got a lot of races coming up. All right. He's Vega is like a legit motorcycle racer now, okay? Legit amateur motorcycle racer is what I'm gonna say. Okay, so yeah, um, as you can see, yeah, the brake thing still doesn't work. Okay, but uh, yeah, there it is. So everything is all installed. So I'm gonna go, I cracked open a beer and I'm gonna go clean up my garage because it's been, I've had Suron parts and tools all over the place for a while now and I'm tired of looking at it, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah, look forward to a review of uh, of the braking system and all the other goodies I put on. All right, here's me go.